Before we get started, I want you to think about how memory works. What does it take to remember something? The basic process is pretty simple. We have something new we want to remember and we put it in our brains. And then later, at some point, we want to pull that thing out again. So we go rummaging around and then we pull that information back out again. That's it. There's just two steps. The first step, when we put something in, that is called encoding. And the second step, when we take something out again, that is called retrieval. Every memory hack, every special secret sauce method technique, everything you've ever seen on YouTube about how to remember things um, falls into one of those two categories. Let's start with the first step first. If we don't put our memory in very, very carefully, it's gonna be hard to pull out again, right? There's a lot of information that we take in every day, and it's very easy for other things to interfere with pulling that thing out again. So one of the first techniques, one of the most basic things that we can do to make it easier to remember something is to connect it to other information that we know or other stuff that we're learning about. This is called elaboration. Mnemonics are a form of elaboration, right? We connect something that is hard to remember to something that is easier to remember. The memory palace is a form of elaboration. We connect the stuff that we want to remember to various locations in a place that we know really well and that we can like imagine walking through. Chunking is a form of elaboration. Chunking is where we group certain parts of this stuff that we want to remember together to give it some more extra meaning so that we can remember it more easily. So in this case, we're connecting new information with other new information that we're learning to kind of make sense of it so that it's easier to remember later. Any amount of elaboration is helpful for memory. Even thinking about you know, how economic a concept is or a word is will help you remember that concept or word later. Well, let's move on to step two, retrieval. Were you paying attention earlier? Let's roll back the tape because there is something very, very important here. The memory that you put in is not exactly the same as the memory that you take out again. Now, if you want to be fancy, you can say retrieval is a memory modifier. Or you can just say remembering something changes the memory of that thing. The change that's most important for the purposes of this video is that it makes the memory stronger. Every time that you retrieve a memory, it becomes easier to retrieve in the future. It's almost like you're giving your brain practice at finding the right path to the memory that you want. And so in the future, it's just a lot easier for your brain to kind of walk down that path again. If something's really, really hard to remember, but you do ultimately pull it out of your head, that actually strengthens the memory a lot. When it's just super easy to retrieve, then, well, retrieving it doesn't help quite as much. Although elaborative techniques are flashy and they get a lot of press, simple retrieval is at least as powerful and probably quite a bit more powerful than elaboration. Like elaboration, retrieval also reduces the interference that other memories have on the kind of target memory that you're trying to, to, to pull out of your head. Flashcards are a retrieval technique. So you see the cue and you try to remember the target. The testing effect, which I uh, made a short video on here, I'll link up in, in the video and then there's, there'll be a link in the description. The testing effect also relies on uh, the power of retrieval. But from all the evidence we have, one of the most powerful techniques for remembering things is free recall. And it's, it's a criminally underused technique. And the basic approach is to take a blank sheet of paper, pull it out, and try to remember everything you can about the topic that you're interested in, in remembering. And you get bonus points if you can actually check whether you know, you've remembered the right things or not. A common misconception is that 
like repeating a phone number over and over and over again in your head is going to make you remember it better. Uh, it's, it's not. That is not retrieval. Repeating that phone number in your head is just keeping the phone number in your short-term memory. For retrieval to work its magic, you actually have to let it go into your long-term memory. You have to let some time elapse and then try to remember it. And if it's hard to remember, all the better in terms of, of long-term long -term learning. <laughs> so so that, that, that was probably a terrible example. I grew up in the 90s when you actually kind of did have to remember phone numbers, and this is the classic example that I feel like everyone gives. Um, but substitute in whatever it is you have to remember, I don't know, Instagram handles or whatever it is the kids are trying to remember these days, you can replace that uh, in, in this example and, 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 and th the basic principle still holds. That's it. Every memory technique falls into one of these two categories. It's one of these two processes at work. If you really want to remember something, you should do both. You should elaborate and you should uh, do retrieval practice. But there's, there's something else really important that you should do as well which is like this video. The more likes that this video gets, the more sweet YouTube money I can get, and the more Legos I can buy, which lets me make more videos. There's a lot more to learning than just remembering information. If you want to see more stuff about the research on learning and teaching, subscribe. Thanks for watching.